with quite a number of executives from all over the world who are visiting China. Doing those conversations, many of them actually leave China with the impression on seeing a vibrant economy, seeing a vibrant consumer, and actually renewing their commitment to China and renewing their investments into the China opportunity. While you can see a lot of excitement, uh, which is still there, a lot of confidence, I do not want to hide some of the, actually the meaningful concerns in the market right now. The consumer sentiment remains hovering around the all-time low. The same holds true for the business and investor sentiment. By speaking with many company executives, um, there are concerns. And there are concerns around the economic recovery and the outlook for 2024. So that is also the reality. I think we're also aware that export has been declining. I think we know of the softness of the property market. We see capital flowing out of the country. So there's a number of things, Bixi, which are important for us to watch. We're looking back to the third quarter of 2023, a quarter which brought an increase of retail sales in the mid single digits. We're also looking to a China which actually is growing in terms of services. We see travel roaring back, domestic travel exceeding the levels of the pre-pandemic levels. International travel is still low, about half of where we were pre the pandemic crisis. But this is not driven by the lack of appetite. Chinese consumers enjoy traveling. They're passionate about traveling. And once the flights become more reasonable and visas become easier accessible, we will see also the return of international travel and the impact that will have on the consumption of Chinese all over the world. We also see restaurants being packed. Look here in the restaurants in Shanghai. So even during an era of single digit growth, we actually have pockets where we actually see very healthy and strong growth and companies and brands actually doing exceptionally well. If you take a double click at double 11 and see what actually have we seen, the sheer size of what was sold at double 11 is actually larger than some actually mature economies. It's more than a trillion RMB, which was uh, spent over that time period. If you see where those growth is happening, there's the area, for example, of food and beverage, which is an area where we've actually seen more spending in this year's W11. At the same time, I also don't want to basically hide the fact that there are categories which traditionally has always been very strong. For example, the beauty industry, which actually have seen a slight decline. This year, probably more than in most other years before, has been a very strong focus on price. Like the big platform has attracting uh, traffic, but they've also been very aggressive in the way how they communicated the discounts they have been providing and the additional product and price subsidies which has provided to the platform. So if you think about it from a consumer perspective, it has been a great time to actually buy attractive products. The average selling prices on the platforms are coming down. And why is that happening? Is because the consumers is actually looking for promotions. They're looking of different channels where they can basically buy the desirable brand, the premium brand they want, but they can get it at the, the most affordable price. Sometimes that could be overseas, sometimes that can be on social commerce platforms. The other thing we see is that people actually are going to smaller package sizes, so they buy smaller quantities of the product that allows them to basically upgrade their spending to a better brand, while at the same time maybe actually paying a lower price than they did in the past. So we've seen during the years of the pandemic that local companies have been gaining share. That now has basically more stabilized. And we see growth both coming from foreign basic companies with foreign brands in a new and open China. And at the same time, uh, we still also basically see the local companies being competitive. But we don't see a substantial shift in shares anymore vis-a-vis -vis what we had in the last years. My outlook for 2024 remains cautiously optimistic. We need caution looking at the consumer sentiment at an all-time low, cautious on the business sentiment. At the same time, we can also be optimistic. We can be optimistic on the strengths of the middle class, particularly the upper middle class, the sheer scale China is today, and optimistic given that a single-digit growth, a 4 to 5 percent growth, would actually still add the retail sales in China of in India and Indonesia today combined.